Okay, this is FHOP training session three, and we want to deal with the topic of spiritual warfare. Uh, prayer has several different forms. There's petitionary prayer, there's devotional prayer, but the kind of prayer we want to move into is a prayer that, that brings the kingdom of God on earth, which means we're displacing darkness with the kingdom of God, and that is spiritual warfare. So it's very important to understand that what you do is, is going to uh, partner with Jesus Christ and all the angels of heaven to bring heaven to earth, and the devil does not like that whatsoever. So your identity is both a son, but it's also a soldier. That's how the Bible refers to you, as a soldier. So you don't want to be naive about what's going on. You want to be very clear that you're taking on in one sense, forces of darkness and partnering with the kingdom of light. You want to say anything about that? Yeah, uh, the the soldiering part for for any child, like being settled as a son, we also have a soldiering, and as a soldier, you have to be aware that it is you're on the offensive. You're trying to gain ground and go forward, move the kingdom forward. Mm -hmm. That is establishing on the earth the rule of Christ, which the Father has declared already. It belongs to the anointed one, Jesus, Psalms 2. And the, the kings and the nations, they rage against it. And the enemy is behind that. He is not wanting this kingdom, his kingdom, to be taken over. So as a soldier, when you start praying, kingdom come, and there is a practical advancement of the rule of Jesus Christ in every sphere of life, you have to be aware that you have to be guard, like completely protected, your heart, your soul, your mind, your lifestyle, so there is no point of entry. And mm -hmm. we're talking about the armor, the, the armor, armor of, of God. God. Yeah, so as a soldier, if you're going to go to war, you want to make sure that you have all the armor on. Even in con combat today, soldiers wear you know jackets that shield bullets from entering their heart, and they wear helmets. They get prepared to go to war. They don't just run out in their you know in their t-shirts, expecting you know to be protected. So here's what the Bible teaches out of Ephesians six verse ten. It says, "Finally, be strong in the Lord." and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Now that's yeah. what you need to do when you go into prayer. Amen. That you may be able to stand so against good. the schemes of the Amen. devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. So stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, okay? No deception. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, no sin, holiness. And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, not doubt, not unbelief, but the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying all times in the Spirit. Yeah. And we're going to mention praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Beloved, this is war. Yeah. You're called to go to war and displace darkness with light. So it is good before you go to war to take a little inventory with the Holy Spirit mm. about what's going on right now in my false self. Do I have any unforgiveness? Is there any, is, is there any grudge in my heart? Do I am, am I offended? Have I a spirit of offense on me? So this is a little inventory that you want to check. Where am I? Am I just completely washed by the blood of the land, completely seated with Christ at the right hand of the Father, which is the, the right hand as in it is the arm of God 
to, ex to extend the kingdom? And, or do I have some things that, Holy Spirit, I want to clean up right now. I need to, I need to make decisions to be completely uh, clean before, before the throne and before the world and the enemy. Okay, so as a soldier, you have to do your preparation work, okay? This is what we're saying to you. You want to grab on and make sure you have the mind of Christ. Don't, don't come under deception. Saturate yourself in the Word of God. Take every thought captive. Do not entertain negative thoughts mm -hmm. and a, a bitter root of judgment in your mind. No offense, no judgments. You deal with your false self, which is your old man, by walking him to the cross. You do not coddle mm -hmm. your false self. You walk your false self to the cross. You've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you, Galatians 2.20. And Romans 13.12 right. tells us, let us put aside the deeds of darkness mm -hmm. and put on the armor of light. Wow. The armor of light. It is Jesus' armor. Yeah. The armor of light is literal light. I mean, it sounds like it's being allegorical. It isn't. When we fill up with Jesus, Jesus is light. God is light. There is an energy, there's a power that dwells in us called the light. Jesus Christ is life, he's light, he's love. There's an energy of light that emits off of a believer that's in communion with the Lord, that's not in compromise, that's in living in holiness. So when you come into unity with Jesus Christ, you walk your false self to the cross, you repent over any sin, you close all the doors to the dark, to the dark realm, you, you do not want any portals open for hell to come and knock you off your feet. And then out of, you, out of your innermost being is a radiant light that the demonic hates. Mm -hmm. They don't even want to come near it. It's like a force shield that emits off of you. And in that armor of light, you're protected. Your mind's renewed. Your heart's full of joy and love and forgiveness and mercy. You are radiating with light. That makes you dangerous to hell. Believe me. You, you can't be stopped when you're in unity with other believers and radiating the light of God. You don't have to ever be nervous about darkness or, or the demonic because you outrank even Satan himself as a child of light, as a child of God, as a son of light. You outrank Lucifer. So make sure that you don't empower him with, with lies to undermine you. The only way Satan can draw, knock you off course is a lie. Yeah. He's yeah. a liar. He's a liar. He's a father of lies. So you can't give in to a lie. You believe the truth, come mm -hmm. into unity, and you'll radiate light. All right, now, you come under the blood of Jesus. You put the blood of Jesus over other people by forgiving them, by applying mercy. Listen to this. The only way Satan can rule in the earth is broken covenant, which means a severing of relationships. All demonic power operates in broken covenant. Guess what? The blood of Jesus is kept covenant, and it triumphs over all broken covenant. So wherever a covenant's been broken, you can apply the ministry of the blood of Jesus over that broken covenant and trump it. Amen. It yeah. overrides it. It cleanses it. No matter what, you repent for that sin, you apply the blood of Jesus over that, and it's powerfully cleansing that the, imp the uh, impact of that broken covenant. Yeah. Wow. The, the, and the covenant that you, you bring is, is a perfect covenant. It's the perfect covenant of Jesus Christ and that he wants to establish over all the earth. So like Tim said, it trumps every broken covenant. And sometimes we, if we take our eyes off of the perfect covenant of Christ, we can actually be overwhelmed be, with the broken covenant. And what we're saying is do your homework, prepare your heart, and only look at the absolute perfect covenant of Jesus, the centrality mm -hmm. of the cross, mm -hmm. which is Christ being established forever as ruler over the earth. And this is what you declare. This is what you proclaim. This is what you decree over broken covenants. Mm -hmm. And His perfect covenant comes in and it trumps any broken covenant. Right. So we pray for the hearts of people because it is people we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's geographical boundaries. Yes, there is political spirits. There is other things. But we pray specifically for people 
we are, we are after the lost sons of God. And it says in 2 Corinthians 3.16 that anyone who turns their heart to God, then the veil is removed. It's not that we pray that the veil be removed also that their heart can be turned towards God. We pray for the heart, the covenanting. What is already written in the heart of the human species is, I was made for 24-7 covenant with God Almighty. Mm -hmm. I was made for this. Yeah. This is the heart. We aim at the heart. When the heart is softened, then, mm -hmm. then, we know the veil will be removed when people turn their hearts. Yeah, awesome. The word covenant means oneness. It means to be bound to. So Satan operates by doing this, creating lies and then judgments and accusations. In lies or judgments or accusations, mm -hmm. people get offended. Yeah. They enter into those judgments. They sever their heart. They pull back. They betray. They divide. And then they, their love grows cold. All right, now in warfare prayer, we're going in the opposite spirit. Covenant means to be bound to. Satan is a divider, and, but God is a uniter. That's why Jesus' number one prayer is that we be one. If you've ever entered into any kind of division, separating, disconnecting from other believers, you are under the influence of hell. Hell never divides anyone. All right, excuse me, Heaven. God never, excuse me. <laughs> Heaven never divides anyone. Hell divides. So as a covenant maker, as an intercessor, you're going to pray for oneness and through the blood of Jesus. And you're going to say, Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you knit people at a heart level, yeah. Yeah. that you would bring your heaven on earth, which is unity and love. So you have an authority now as a soldier to unleash the influence of the Holy Spirit onto human beings. That's what yeah. Manu was saying. And the number one prayer is for oneness. It's for love. Mm -hmm. It's for unity. That unity comes through the kept covenant of Jesus' blood. Now, finally, what we're going to go for here, as soldiers, in unity with other soldiers, don't pray in isolation. We don't want anybody forming, uh, going into that one hour alone. We want you coming into agreement because one in one is not two in the Holy Spirit. No soldier fights alone. You need to have a partner. So one in one is... 10,000, it says one puts 1,000 to flight, two 10,000. So two people, three people in unity yeah. in the prayer mm -hmm. room will create a fire, will create a power, an agreement, because you're symbolizing the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're symbolizing the family of God. So two or three people in unity, you come together, and you're going to start praying for the laborers of the harvest. Mm -hmm. You're going to say, Father, release laborers into this city. And now we will periodically, every week, we'll be sending out prayer requests. So as a soldier, you come into unity for your hour. You prepare yourself with your armor. You come under the blood of Jesus. You apply it and pray for unity. Then you're going to pray Luke 10 2. Send laborers into the harvest. People that will go in there by twos to bring the kingdom of God on earth. Amen. That's our number one prayer is we're going to pray for apostolic mobilization uh, and the saturation of church plants, micro church plants, <laughs> to saturate every neighborhood, every business. We believe God's going to cause a great revival to come to the nations. A billion souls are going to come into the nations, but God wants to put those billion souls in strategic families where they can be discipled. The wineskin of heaven is family, meaning the container that absorbs those people and trains them up to follow Jesus and be mature sons as family. So we believe God's going to saturate the planet with micro churches that are interconnected and multiplying. So we're going to pray, Thy kingdom come, new churches will be planted, souls will be saved, harvesters will be released, cities will be changed, because soldiers of God have come together, sons and soldiers together, twos and threes, for one hour praying for God to move in certain places in the earth. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. And that is session three. That is session three. And your call as a soldier to be in unity with the body of Christ, the army of God, to bring the kingdom of God on earth. God bless you. Tune in for session four. Very important.